Hello there everybody, welcome back to Kubrick for not the final episode of the Falcon's Nest building series. What? Yeah, I know I should be done with it already, but because of the Easter holidays and Star Wars celebration streaming all weekend, I just wasn't able to spend so much time on the build. But nonetheless, we've got some nice progress in this episode, so I hope you don't mind we spend some more time on it. And with the lower part finished previously and the work moved up, there is for sure a lot of great new stuff added that we can talk about, so get ready for yet another exciting episode. But as usual, before we start, let's feed the algorithm a bit, so go ahead and smash that like button, and if you end up enjoying this episode, consider subscribing to the channel, because after we're done with this beauty, I have a lot of awesome mocks planned for the future. Ok, so now with all that being said, it's time to jump into today's progress, so let's get this episode started right now. And what better way to start than with new parts that may be just a huge mess at the moment, but I know a quick way to fix it. To be honest, not much to talk about here because it's just a pick a brick cup full of light grey masonry bricks, but the build could not continue without that, so it's a very important cup. So with the parts ready, let's talk progress now. And what I've started with was finishing the bottom part of the tower to the point where the sections will connect to one another. I played around with cable management inside, made a solid skeleton holding it all in place and covered it all with some different plates and tiles, leaving the battery pack on the top so that I can easily turn on the lights placed in the bottom part of the fortress. Now you may have noticed there are some axles sticking out of the tower and that is because this is the way I will attach the upper part of the floor since it will be a totally separate section. I think this will be a good solution and should be a pretty solid one, especially when I'll attach the tower not only by the axles, but also a few jumper studs on the corners. But for now we'll leave the tower aside, because I want to make the gatehouse first. And since it is a part that I just have a general idea of, I guess I'll just have to figure it out while building and hope that it will be something worthy of the rest of the build. First of all, I have to figure out a way how to make the mechanism for the portcullis and make the supporting pillars since the gatehouse will be open from the back making it a U-shaped chamber with a balcony on the top. So yeah, that's what we have for now. And to be honest, it's awful. So let's make a couple of changes and I'll get back to you in a second. One hour later. Ok, that's much better. It took a while because I was thinking about how to make the mechanism as realistic as possible and I think I nailed it here. We have a wooden frame with some gears holding the portcullis chains, so now the next step is making something to attach these chains to, allowing the portcullis to be raised. And this is what I came up with. It's a minimalistic approach to the mechanism of course, but in the scale that I'm working with here because of the gatehouse size, it's looking very good in my opinion, so let's move on and finish the gatehouse from the top. So I made the upper battlements with these Nexonite tiles, but I think it's not exactly what I wanted, so I think I'm going to take it apart and try a different approach. One eternity later. Yes, that is what I wanted. I've expanded the top of the tower with some inverted slopes and that allowed me to do some proper machiculations. As you can see from both sides, there are holes underneath the Merlons through which an archer stationed here can either shoot arrows much closer to the gate or even throw some rocks that they have stored in the crate on the top. There is of course a ladder here leading to the top that may not be too comfortable to climb on, but it serves its purpose allowing the soldiers to get to the top without taking too much space below. As for the Merlins themselves, they are a bit shorter than the ones on the walls below, but that's more than enough since the archers will be nicely covered either way from the projectiles shot from below. I've also covered the floor here with some tiles and a few details, and now we can move to making the same floor pattern on the rest of the wall. Walk, walk. Ok, with that we have the whole part done, so for the next step, 
Let's continue with the big tower. I had to adjust some corners here so it would all look seamlessly and after that I made the doors coming into the tower from both sides of the wall walk. A bit narrow, but that's the way the medieval towers were usually built, taking only as much space as needed since no heavy armored troops will go up there, so the scale in my opinion just works great here. As for the window, I made it in the same style as below, matching the level with the virtual staircase that is going up on the inside, which I imagine is going all around the tower, something like this. So continuing with the idea, I will have to plan out the rest of the windows also fitting these imagined stairs, but that shouldn't be a problem so I will make them as I move on. From the courtyard side of the tower, I decided to place the banner I showed you in the last episode, but I think I should make it even bigger because the tower will definitely be a lot taller than this and then I will place another window over it just so it fits right with the rest. As I was saying, the tower will be completely removable and how I did it is the whole part along with the other door will be detachable from the rest just like this. So let's now try to move the tower up a bit more so we can end this episode with some worthy progress and while we're at it, I just want to say that I'm leaving some space here in the middle with a plan in mind that will hopefully go as planned because I have such an idea what to put in the tower that it will blow your mind. But I don't want to spoil anything in case it won't work out. But if it does, I assure you guys, that will be so cool. So for now, I'll let you enjoy the speed build of me making the tower and after that we'll take one more look at the full progress I made. Yeah, I think that is enough of the tower for this week because going even higher there will be some wooden hoardings on the top and some kind of a conical roof but I don't have any prototype for it yet and I need to order a couple of more parts to even get to that point so that will have to remain a thing to be done in the finale. Because yeah, I want the next episode to be the last one since we only have the tower to finish and of course the bridge to make but that should be doable I think so you can expect this beauty of a mock to reach the finish line somewhere at the beginning of May. As for now, let's take one more look at the tower and all of the progress done and while we're at it, just a reminder to let me know what you think about this week's progress in the comments section below and drop a like if you enjoyed what you just saw overall. And with that said, let's wrap it up since there is not much left to talk about so I will see you all in the next and final episode of this series and until then, as usual, stay safe and keep it bricking.